Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. We're going to continue with topic two, mechanics paper two. Last time we reached question number three. So let's do the questions together. Calculate the average force exerted by the rocket on the ball. Now let's put the beginning of the question first. You have a student. The student strikes a tennis ball that is initially at rest. So initial at rest, this is the initial speed. <clears throat> so this is V initial or U in IB. So that is least the rocket at speed. This will represent V final or for the IB, we call it V. The ball has mass. So this is M. It's 0.058 kilogram. And the contact between the ball and the rocket lasts for 25 millisecond. So this is a time, delta T or T in the IP. 25 milli means 25 times 10 to the power negative 3 second. I need to calculate the average force exerted by the rocket on the ball. Force is moving, so it has momentum. So I can calculate the force from Newton's second law, force equal change in momentum divided by change in time. Change in momentum divided by change in time. Momentum is mass times velocity, so mass, the thing that's changing here is the velocity, so times change in velocity divided by time. Mass of the ball is 0.058. Velocity, change in velocity, it means final minus initial. The final is 60 for initial 0 divided by 25 times 10 to the power negative 3. And this, after you round it, you should get 148.48 or almost equal 150 in Newton. 148. Point five Newton. Okay, part P, calculate the average power delivered to the pole during the contact. Now we know power, it's work divided by time. Work is energy, so it's always equal to change in energy divided by time, or the amount of energy transferred or converted per time. Now, what is the type of energy the ball is moving? So, the type of energy is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, it's half m v square divided by time, half the mass of the ball is 0 0.058, and the change in the velocity of the ball is 60. 64 minus 0, 64. So 64, oh, I should write it correctly. 64 square divided by the contact time 25 millisecond times 10 to the power negative 3. And this should give you 4,751.5. If I want to round it, it will give me 4,800 joule per second, or what? <clears throat> Same question now, part C, and this is about projectile. Let's read the question and refresh our memory a little bit about projectile motion. You have a student. The student strikes a tennis ball at point B here. The tennis ball is initially directed at an angle 7 below the horizontal. This is the horizontal line below the horizontal. Okay. The height of the ball with respect to the ground is 2.8. And you have here this, the following data available. So this is the height. The height, this will represent in y direction. So this is delta y. The distance from the student, the distance of the student from the net, the student is here, to the net, 
This is, so this will represent delta, this is an x direction, so this is delta x, okay? The initial speed of the ball 64, so this is v initial, or we can call it u as the db block. What do I need to find? I need to calculate the time it takes the tennis ball to reach that net. Now, let's just revise a little bit about the projectile. This type of projectile, it's projectile launched horizontally. So for projectile launched horizontally, I have motion in two dimension, X and Y dimension, X dimension and Y dimension. X and Y. Launched horizontally, okay, it means it will go like this and then it will fall down eventually. So I have motion in Y direction and I have motion in X direction. Here it has initial speed in x direction, and this the initial speed always in projectile, any type of projectile, initial speed in x direction equal the final speed in x direction will equal vx, and it's always constant number. It's always constant. Doesn't change. I don't have acceleration in y direction. This projectile always fall down. So acceleration in x direction, zero. I have acceleration in y direction, which is equal 9.81, or I can round it to, for simplicity, 10 meter per second square. Velocity in y direction starts, since I have here maximum uh, gravitational potential energy, I don't have kinetic energy, so start with initial speed, it could be zero, or here I have, I have the speed uh, since with an angle. So this speed, it has two component, one in x direction and one in y direction. x direction, this is adjacent, so it will be what? Cosine. So x direction, it will be v in x direction, it will be v initial cosine the angle theta. Here I have in y direction, v in y direction, v initial in y direction is change. V initial start with the speed and this speed start to increase just before it hits the ground. So it will be v initial sine, sine the angle theta because it is opposite to the initial speed. I don't have acceleration here, but here I have acceleration. So I'm gonna use the kinematic equation or Suvat equation that I need, I I, um, I used to uh, to use when I solve this type of questions. So I can use this equation in y direction delta y will equal v initial in y direction times delta t plus half acceleration in y direction delta t square. Now remember this is will be negative, and this is negative because it's moving down and this also it's negative 10 and I have v final will equal v initial plus the acceleration y direction times delta t and the last one The last one, v final, v final square will equal v initial square plus two acceleration times delta y. So I have this is number one, two, three, four. Here I have this is number one. Here I have only one equation because I don't have acceleration. So all the other terms will be zero. So here I will have delta x, and instead of delta y, I'll have delta x will equal v initial x direction times delta y. Okay, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 
times delta t, I don't have acceleration, acceleration zero. So all the acceleration part will be equal to zero. This usually the equation I need to use when I solve any problems that is related to projectile motion. Now let's go to back to our problem. Delete all of this. I need to find a time that it takes the tennis to reach the net. So we'll make our table. This is X and Y. V initial in X direction is the same as V final in X direction. Both of them be equal 64. I'm going to take the cosine component, cosine 7, and this will give me 63 point. 52 meter per second and this is the first equation second equation I have delta x will equal v initial and x direction times delta t delta x from the question is 11.9 v initial I just calculated which is 63.52 times delta t times delta t so I can find delta t Divide both sides by 63.52, it will give me 0.187 second, second, or 0.19. Okay, so this is the answer of this question. Calculate the time it, take the, it takes the tennis ball to reach. So time here, we've just calculated, which equal point. 187 second I can round it to point 0.19 second D show that the tennis ball passes over the net in order to prove that the tennis ball passes over the net I have to find the height of the tennis ball will reach if this height is greater than the height of the tennis ball, that means the tennis ball will pass the net. So how can I find the height of the tennis ball? Now I need to go now. So this part that we calculated here, this is C, so I'm going to D now. So here, this is D, and here we're done with C. With C. How I'm going to find it? Let's go now to calculate V initial in Y direction. V initial in Y direction will give you V initial, which is 64, sine, sine the angle theta, and this will give you 7.8 meter per second. I'm going to use this equation, delta Y equals V initial y direction times delta t plus half acceleration in y direction times delta t square. V initial is going down, this projectile is moving down, so it will be negative 7.8. At time we've just calculated, which is 0 0.187. Acceleration is negative 10 down, negative 10 divided by 2, it will give me negative 5 times 0.187 square. So you should get negative. Negative, it means down, negative 1.63 uh, meter. This is delta y. Now I need y. Okay. I need y. Y, it will be the original height, the length of the height of uh, the student when he strike the, the ball, which is 2.8, minus delta Y to give you the height of the tennis ball. So the height of the tennis ball will be 2.8, 
minus 